By now, you've probably figured out how into the Umbrella Academy we are. The show is in development limbo for a number of years, which is part of what made its inaugural season such a well-crafted joy. And boy, did we need it, since most of us still aren't over the mass cancellation of the Marvel Netflix originals. Seriously, when I finish that last episode of Jessica Jones, I'm going to be in an absolute ball of tears. The good news is that the show was renewed for a second season earlier this year. The bad news is that since shooting is set to begin in Toronto this summer, it'll likely be a bit of a wait until it's released. But until the first season 2 trailer drops, there's a lot to cover on what may transpire in the episodes ahead, specifically events that took place in the comics that have a good chance of happening in some capacity on screen. Welcome back to The Binger everyone, and thanks for joining us as we cover the Umbrella Academy Season 2, things that could happen based on the comics. For this video, we're comparing what we've seen on the show so far to what's happened in the comic books. So if you haven't caught up with both versions of the Hargreaves Family Adventures just yet, beware of spoilers. Season 1 of The Umbrella Academy was heavily focused on the first volume of the comic series entitled Apocalypse Suite. So many fans who've read the comics have come to the same consensus that Season 2 will focus on Volume 2, Dallas. This issue collection takes the reader through Number 5's time, stuck in the future, and journey back to the present day. As in the show, the turning point was when he decided not to go ahead with the assassination of President John F. Kennedy in Dallas in 1963. The Commission, or as they're called in the comics, the Temps Adernalis, track him down and force him to go back in time to complete the mission. As a result, the family spends most of the story stuck in the early 1960s. In season one of the show, the Commission first recruits Five as he wanders through a post-apocalyptic wasteland. Aging and losing his sanity, he's approached by the Handler, who offers him a way out. In exchange for five years of service as an assassin, he'll be granted retirement at any point in history he wants. But after he breaks his contract, the handler tries to re-recruit him, this time for an eerily corporate job at their headquarters, which he accepts in exchange for his family's safety. Although Five manages to stay one step ahead, the commission makes it clear that they're omnipresent and not accepting his resignation. He is, after all, their most distinguished assassin. As the commission's purpose is to keep key historical events intact, it's more than likely that they'll push Five to finish the Kennedy job. But whether the segue is through the time portal 5 is seen opening at the end of season 1 or the commissions themselves remains to be seen. Within the first issue of Umbrella Academy Dallas, it becomes apparent that Luther has become severely depressed. He's lethargic, morbidly obese, and hands most of the team leadership responsibilities over to Diego. This carries on until the siblings find themselves stuck in the past and Luther shows up to help Diego out of a tough spot. In the TV series, Luther suffers a significant personal setback when he discovers that his father sent him to the moon for no reason. Only his depression is short-lived and he eventually celebrates his liberation from Sir Reginald's influence by going to a rave. Oh, and cautiously explores pursuing a relationship with Allison. Season 2 may not show Luther completely depressed, but it wouldn't be a stretch to imagine him stepping back from his leadership. Five, who is technically decades older than the rest of them, is the one who manages to save the group at the last moment. And, with the exception of Klaus, he's the only sibling with the time-traveling experience needed for their next adventure. The majority of Luther's sense of self was devoted to being Space Boy, so watching him explore and overcome a loss of identity seems plausible at this stage. In Season 1 of The Umbrella Academy, Klaus gets his hands on one of the Commission's briefcases and is knocked back in time to the Vietnam War. It's a heartwarming storyline for our favorite necromancer since he falls in love, then seemingly hits rock bottom and sobers up. In the comic series, Luther, Diego, and Klaus attempt to follow Five and Allison back in time before the Kennedy assassination takes place. However, they arrive a few years too early, which lands Diego as a sergeant in Vietnam. He and his platoon get involved in a subplot about resurrecting a mummy that'll end the war. Once that blows up in their faces, the brothers head back to the States to intercept Five. Now it's worth mentioning that the last time we saw the Hargreaves siblings on the small screen, they'd reverted back to children. But depending on what effects time travel has on their ages, splitting up the siblings and placing Diego and Klaus in Vietnam is a possibility. The two of them have already been seen to have a closer relationship than most of the family members. And let's face it, it would be wonderful to see Klaus and Dave get a second shot at love. In the flashback to Klaus's time in Vietnam, he and Dave are also seen partying at a nightclub. 
In comics, Klaus takes Luther and Diego to the nightclub in Saigon after the three of them reunite, so it's possible this location will be used again. Dr. Terminal is introduced in the third issue of the Umbrella Academy, Apocalypse Suite, Dr. Terminal's Answer. He's a terminally ill supervillain who swore revenge on the family years ago. When they reunite for their father's funeral, his robot army, the Terminauts, attack the city, leading the siblings into another showdown. Some fans felt that the lack of zany supervillains in the Netflix series made the show feel a bit out of place, especially since the comics created some pretty memorable ones. Instead, most of the flashbacks to the early days of the Umbrella Academy involved mundane crime fighting and publicity opportunities. So, the inclusion of some classically diabolical antagonist might be integral to invigorating the second season. Since Dr. Terminal was sent to the Hotel Oblivion, which is the namesake of the third volume of the comics, he's a likely contender. It's even more likely considering that Harold Jenkins mentions the villain's name in a flashback of him playing with the Umbrella Academy action figures as a child. Out of all the siblings, Klaus's powers in the TV series might be the biggest departure from his comic book counterpart. The season one finale revealed Klaus making a major discovery of what he's truly capable of. But in the comics, when the character is introduced, he's shown performing telekinesis and flying effortlessly. And even that's just the tip of the iceberg. In the third issue of Dallas, television, or Are You There God, It's Me Klaus, the character is kidnapped by Hazel and Cha-Cha. This happens in season one of the show as well, and in both cases, Klaus tries to bribe them unsuccessfully. But in the comics, instead of trying to scare the pair with the ghost of their past victims, the character tries to reach Space Boy by possessing the TV. Eventually, Hazel and Cha-Cha get tired of him, and it's curtains for Klaus, except that the character goes to heaven and meets God who helps resurrect him, so he can possess Cha-Cha and escape. There are parallels between this and a scene later in the show in which Klaus meets his father in the afterlife. Sir Reginald tells him that he's barely scratched his true potential, which helps push him to resurrect Ben in the season one finale. Both the comics and the show set Klaus up to grow beyond his assumptions about the limit of his powers so it's probable that his abilities will expand again in Season 2. At the end of Umbrella Academy Apocalypse Suite, Five shoots Vanya, aka the White Violin, in order to save the world. On the TV show, Allison fires a gun right next to her sister's head in order to disrupt her sound manipulation abilities, which is a comparably nicer course of action, except that it dooms the planet anyway. In the comics, Vanya suffers from amnesia and paralysis following the incident, which takes her out of action for the majority of the Dallas storyline. While Vanya didn't suffer a gunshot in the TV show, it's likely that the trauma of the recital will have a lasting impact on her. Like her comic book counterpart, she may suffer from memory loss or another debilitating condition that will keep her out of the next fight. There's also the possibility that the gunshot ruptured her eardrums, rendering her powers obsolete once again. It seems safe to assume, in any case, that a recovery won't be a quick one. The last issue of Umbrella Academy Dallas reveals that Luther and Number 5 are in fact twins, something that Allison learns thanks to Temp's Ader Nallis after the Kennedy assassination is carried out. She also reveals that they threaten to off one of the Academy members' biological mothers, thereby erasing them from existence. The mother in question was implied to be Luther and Fives. In both the comics and the TV series, an alpha male sibling rivalry between Luther and Diego plays out, but some of the bickerings that go on between Five and Luther feels like they run pretty deep as well. Luther accuses Five of thinking that he's better than the rest of them, while Five mocks Luther for his shortcomings as the team's leader. Nevertheless, the two of them go out of their way to save each other more than once, and some of their scenes together are undeniably touching. In Season 1, only one of 43 mysterious bursts was seen in detail, and it didn't appear to be of twins. However, if another flashback does reveal a pair of instantly born babies, it'll presumably be Luther and Five. In both the comics and the TV show, Vanya slashes Allison's throat as she becomes the white violin. In the series, Allison is quick to forgive, in protest against keeping Vanya locked up in a soundproof bunker, and as we've already mentioned, deliberately doesn't shoot her in the head. In the comics, however, she holds a grudge against her sister, having lost her powers in the incident. While the damage seems irreparable at first, the Temps and her Nalus offer her a deal at the end of the events of Dallas. She gets her voice back in exchange for helping Five pull off the Kennedy assassination. 
It's odd to imagine Allison being silent for an entire season, even if it might pose a cool acting challenge for Emmy Raver Lampman. A middle ground option might be that Allison does get her voice back, but can't access her powers. But then again, if she and Five time travel together as they do in the comics, he may well invent or steal some technology that stands in for her voice. That and who knows what other gadgets Sir Reginald had laying around the Academy. Sir Reginald Hargreaves' origin has only been hinted at in the television adaptation. The last episode of the first season flashes back to him preparing to make what appears to be a journey through time. It isn't made clear where he's from, but he appears to be leaving because of a nuclear disaster. The comic version makes it clear from the beginning that he's an alien. Presumably, he traveled to Earth to adopt as many of the mysteriously born children as he could, and says that's what he's doing so he can save the world. At the end of Apocalypse Suite, Sir Reginald appears to return to talk Vanya down when she becomes the white violin. However, this turns out to be Klaus masquerading as him as a distraction. In the TV series, however, Klaus does manage to conjure his deceased father after several failed attempts. So this may become the group's primary method of getting more information about the reclusive father for the foreseeable future. The comics also present another option for learning more about Sir Reginald. At one point, Five finds his father's monocle and discovers that it gives the wearer visions. In the TV series, Diego got rid of the monocle after the funeral but it's entirely possible for the team to come across it again, especially if they're jumping through time. Well, that's our rundown on Umbrella Academy Season 2, things that could happen based on the comics. What do you think? Are there any Season 2 possibilities that we didn't touch on? Did you spot something else in the comics that you think will be making it on the TV series? Do what you do best and let us know in the comments. You know we love to hear from you. And if you want to know more about what went down in the comics, Check out our Umbrella Academy Comics vs. TV Show Biggest Differences. Before you go, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe for more great content from The Binger. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.